Good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, what a blessed day it is. Amen, God bless you. Amen, thank you evangelist, I appreciate you. God bless you, may the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. God bless you, Bernadette. Amen. Listen, I just want to share with you all really quickly. Um, you know, we, we live in a world where it is, um, this world is, is very selfish. Yesterday, I taught a message um, in, in church entitled, Are You Selfish? And, and we live in a world where selfishness is all over, all over the place. Hey, Afia, what's going on, my girl? Amen. What's going on, Anthony? Amen. And so usually in this world, most of us have been raised and, and we've been taught to look out for our own interests. Even in fact, the word of God speaks and it says, you know, let, let not each of us look at our own interests, but on the interests of others. You know, which if the word of God wouldn't say it if we didn't have selfish tendencies. You understand what I mean? So um, many of us have not recognized those selfish tendencies. And, you know, the word of God talks about in Hebrews, it says, Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Wherefore, seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now have sat down at the right hand of the Father. One of the key points of that scripture, it says, wherefore seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. There are witnesses that have gone on before you. There are witnesses that have gone on before me. There are witnesses that have testified that Jesus is Lord and that there is yet power in the blood, that there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to everyone that believes. It says to the Jew and even to the Gentile. So in other words, it's good for everybody. And there are witnesses that have testified. There are witnesses, stay focused people. There are witnesses that have testified um, of the goodness, the grace, the power, and the majesty of God. There are witnesses that have boldly proclaimed and have become, you know, faith walkers, right? Heroes and heroines of faith that have stip stipulated and have testified that Jesus is love, Lord and that there is power in his blood, right? And so these witnesses that have gone on are now examples, the word of God says, for us to follow. My question is, um, who is following you? My question is, who, who can depend on you? Who can trust in you? Who can have hope in you? You know, my, my question is today, are we, are we, Anthony, stay focused, stay focused, please, please. I don't want the word of God distracted right now, right? Stay focused. My, my question today is, who can depend on you? Now we all have needs. We all have needs. We all have desires. We all have cravings. We all have things that are on the altar that we're asking God for. My question is, who can depend on you? We live in a world where everybody wants somebody to do something for them. But who can depend on you? Who can look to you as an example for who Christ is. I mean, in all his fullness. I'm not talking about just in segmented parts or segregated parts, but who can depend on you and see Christ in you? To know that looking at you is looking at the example of Christ. Looking at you is somebody that I can say, you know what? I want to be like them. I want to have their faith. I want to have their love. I want to have their, their tenacity, their steadfastness. Who can depend on you? Who? 
And that's a question that we never know because of the fact of that the word of God says that we are cities that are set on the hill that cannot be hidden. We are cities that are set on the hill that cannot be hidden. We can't hide the fact of that God has illuminated us for the world to see. God has illuminated us for the world to see him, right? But if we're so caught up on ourselves, if we're so caught up on, you know, uh, what, what we need in life and what we want in life and, and, oh, this is not working to my liking and that's not working to my liking. It's almost like a person in a relationship. It's almost like a person in a relationship that only asks, what have you done for me lately? It's almost like a person who says, you know what, um, you know, I, I, I know you've been good to me, but, but you haven't done something good for me today. But the question is, you never look at your own. It's almost like the person who always points fingers at the other person saying, hey, you know, uh, this person said something wrong to me or this person done something wrong to me or this person mistreated me in one way or another. But the question is, how are you treating others? You know, one of the key points that I talk about when it comes to fellowship in the body of Christ, right, and coming together with other saints in the church of God, in the, the place that God has ordained. The One of the key things that I said is that church is not just so that you might go and get something, but it's also so that you might go and contribute something. Not just, now, I know we live in a time where a lot of people believe that your only contribution is in finances. No, but that's not your only con contribution. So you got some people that say, oh, because I give to this ministry, then I'm doing my part. And you have some ministries who have decided and told you guys that by, by doing this, you are taking part in the work of the ministry. And so, so many people, even though that's true in a certain way, so many people have said, because this church says that I'm taking part and I'm spreading the gospel, then I'm doing my part in the kingdom by just writing a check. No, you're not. You're not doing your part by just paying offering. You're not doing your part by just paying tithe. You're not doing your part by throwing money at somebody's feet. But you do your part when you love the brotherhood. You do your part when you, the word of God says, all of the commandments fall on these two things. Loving the Lord your God with all of your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. And if you can't do that, then my friends, you have yet to comprehend the fullness of what the kingdom of God is about. You have yet to comprehend it. Who's depending on you? Who's trusting in you? Who's looking to you as an example? Or are we all just sitting back waiting for somebody to take care of us? waiting for someone to pacify us, waiting for someone to bless us, waiting for someone to share with us. Yes, I love teaching. And for the rest of my days, as long as the Lord has given me the power and the grace, I will teach for the rest of my days. But the question is, who are you teaching? Who are you teaching? You've been receiving. You've been receiving, 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 and you've been asking for prayer and asking, oh, prayer for this and prayer for that and prayer for that. And, and you go from one problem to the next, one problem to the next. But my question is, whose burden are you carrying? This is what Galatians says, right? Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six says this, and it, I believe it's in verse two. Verse two says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you can bear somebody else's burden, you fulfill the law of Christ. So I'm just, you know, I'm in this mindset of Lord, help me never to be selfish. Help me never to be thinking about only myself. But Lord, enlarge my territory where I see the needs of others where I see the concerns and cares of others and that it is something that I equally care about. See, God is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The question is, 
are you also that loving? Or are you only concerned and only energetic when it comes to things that concern you? Is your heart big enough? And I just wanted to share that with you all today. God's willing tonight at 8 p.m., um, I'll continue the Bible study that we were talking about on Saturday. I thought I was going to have opportunity to do it yesterday, but yesterday after service, I mean, the spirit poured out in that place. And, and then I had to teach um, our leadership team and we had our um, leadership meeting. And, and after that, when I got home, I was out. I was just really exhausted. And so I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday, but God's willing, I'll get a chance to do it tonight. Um, but I love you guys, but I want you guys to know the truth. The truth is too many of us are selfish. The truth is too many of us only see ourselves and only see what we want, when we want it and how we want it. And that's not the mark of Christ because when you, it's almost like, ah, I got to share this with you before I let you go. When I was um, a single man, right, and had no children, you know, I was constantly in the club, at the parties, hanging out. Um, I was constantly, you know, going all over the place until one time my mother even said to me, my mother said, you treat my house like it's a hotel where you could just come in, take a shower, go to sleep, and then get up and go again, right? And I was gunning. I was running and gunning and hanging out on the street, doing everything I wanted to do, playing basketball, handball, hanging out with my friends. I didn't want to be home. I wanted to be out in the street, right? But check this out. When I had my first son, when I had my first son, things change. My perspective change. Why? Because this is now my son. And I stopped clubbing. I stopped hanging out on the street. I went to work. I took him to daycare. Um, picked him up from daycare. You know, we slept in the same bed. Um, you know, I took care of him. I nurtured him. And I stayed around the house so much. Now, this is when I was younger, right? I was a teenager. I stayed around the house so much until my mother said to me, you don't have no friends that you can go out with, right? She was like, go outside and do something. Have fun. I'll take care of your son, right? And I really didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it at all because my perspective had changed. You know what I mean? And so think about this. When you are truly of the body of Christ, and I know I'm going to get some people mad with this. When you are truly of the body of Christ, you no longer think about yourself because you realize that your brothers and sisters are yours. They belong to you. They are your family. They are there to strengthen you. They're there. The Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the content of, of his friend. The scripture says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The scripture says that when we're birthed into the family, we're birthed into a family of God. We're birthed into where my brother, when I rejoice, my brother can rejoice. When I weep, my brother can weep. We're, we're connected to one another, right? So if you can ostracize yourself from the body of Christ, it is because you are not in the body. And I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off with that statement. The reason why you could feel comfortable with being apart from the body is because you're not connected to the body. You're not of the same spirit. And God has to save your soul. He has to deliver you. This is why anger takes over your life. This is why bitterness takes over your life. This is why the devil has free roam to play with your mind and to play with your heart and to play with your soul and to strike you with fear. Why? Because the spirit of grace that protects us from the power of Satan does not dwell within you. I know a lot of people gonna get married. Hey, my brother Gary. Hey, listen, Gary, listen. My condolences to you and the family, man. I was shocked to hear the news. 
my condolences to you, brother, right? My love to you and the family, um, my love to everybody in the family. And so God bless you and God bless your family. But when I heard the news, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm praying for you and the family. Listen, it is important to know that when we can ostracize ourselves. Now, listen, you could talk about, well, in that church, that church there on the corner are filled with hypocrites. OK, so you don't go to that church. But why didn't you choose the other church? Why didn't you choose the church around the corner? Why didn't you choose a church around the block? Why didn't you choose a church uptown? Why didn't you choose a church downtown? Why didn't you choose a church anywhere? See, the spirit of the enemy has deceived people who are not born again. The Bible says, Jesus says these words to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He says, unless you are born again, you can't even see the kingdom, nor can you enter therein. Read it. Read it for yourself. He says, unless you are born again, you can't see the kingdom, nor can you enter therein. And the reason why people have such difficulties with dealing with the stuff that they're dealing with and dealing with the fact that, hey, here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is, yeah, you got hypocrites in the church that comes to church. Yes, you got hypocrites that come to church, but you got hypocrites in the grocery store. You don't stop shopping. You got hypocrites at the car wash. You don't start getting your car wash. You got hypocrites at the um, gasoline station, but you don't stop getting your gas in your car. You got hypocrites on the bus, but you don't stop taking transportation. You got hypocrites on your job. You don't quit. So the enemy has deceived. He has blinded the minds of people lest they would see the glorious light and be converted. And so the truth of the matter is the, the reason why it's so difficult for us to step forward into what God said is because we need to be converted. We need to be converted. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If your mind is not transformed, you can't prove God's will. Right? And so many of us have tried to uh, uh, fit God into our mortal minds. We've tried to fit God into our, our limited thinking and into our lifestyle. We fit God. We try to fit God and say, well, uh, uh, he, he's the God of my life. He, he's the God of my life and, and God knows that I'm only human. Check this out. The Bible says that the spirit of the Antichrist says that there is, that Jesus, that God did not come in the flesh. Now, when most people, when most people say, well, no, oh, oh, that's easy to say that God is coming in the flesh. No, no, no. What it's talking about that God is coming to flesh. Jesus was God in man. He was God in the flesh, right? So what it's saying is that God is not only God of the spirit realm, but he's God enough to keep your body from sinning. He is God enough to keep you walking upright. He, and, and we, we have this teaching around that talks about that. Well, you're only human. And God knows you're not going to be perfect. And God knows you're not. So why did God tell you to be perfect as he's perfect? Why did he tell you to be holy as he is holy? If, if there is no power available for you. Okay. So this excuse, this mindset is a selfish, sensual, earthly mindset. And you got a lot of people that's just living on the outskirts. You're living on the outskirts. Yes, you have talents. Yes, yes, you have, you have abilities. Yes. And, and listen, in your, because you were made in the, in the image and likeness of God, listen, anything a human puts their mind to, it, it can be excellent, right? So you can have somebody who is a, a musician or somebody who's a singer and oh my God, when they open their mouth, it's like, oh my God, sounds like an angel, right? But it doesn't mean spirit is there. It doesn't mean spirit is there. Because spirit is transformative. Spirit breaks yokes. Spirit sets the captives free. Right? The problem with many of us, we're stuck in bondage 
and we're stuck in foolishness and we're stuck in not being able to make the right decisions consistently is because you need to be born again. Now, maybe you were born again before, but something happened and you fell off and you've departed from the holy truth. You've departed from the holy God. OK, you've departed from from the, the power that God says is yours. And the enemy doesn't have power over God. The devil told the seven sons of Sceva, Jesus, I know. And I know who Paul is, but the devil said, who are you? And so the reason why I, I, I don't understand this when I when I see people who purport to be children of the most high God, but yet and still the devil is wreaking havoc in your life. How does that work? I, I'm thankful to God that I don't understand. But how does that work? Because when my Bible tells me and my faith tells me and my life have shown me that when the enemy comes up against me like a flood, the Lord that's within me lifts up a standard against him and said, Satan, you can only go but so far. And God doesn't allow Satan to bring me to my breaking point. Do you hear me? God doesn't allow Satan to just have his way in my life. God doesn't allow Satan, even when I'm asleep at night. And the enemy tries to attack me in my dreams. My spirit is still awake with my father. My spirit is still awake with my father. And sometimes I'm laying in my bed and maybe I may have my window open. And just by the sound of the wind, I can discern spirit. My God, help me, Holy Spirit. And help your people. See, the reason why we can't discern spirit is because we're not born of his spirit. And so the Bible says the God of this world has blinded their minds. Lest they would see the glorious light and be converted. Yeah, you're right, Afia. You're absolutely right about that. You know, and, and it's not about, you know, and I got to say this, people of God is not about cliches. Because it, honestly, you can quote the Bible and the devil doesn't respect that. What he respects is the backing behind what you're quoting. He respects the spirit of the Lord that stands up to that word. So now if I'm in opposition of God's word, the word of God says that if you've sinned in one point, you're guilty of all. So if I'm in opposition in God's word, if I'm living a life or a lifestyle that is in opposition to what God said, then guess what? I can quote the Bible all day. I can use cliches. I can use all those different things. But guess what? It don't mean a hill of beans to the devil. Let me, let me, Lord have mercy. I'm going to let you guys get back to work because I could stay on this for the next 10, 15 hours. It, it is amazing to me how many people have been blinded. You just go through, you become reactionary. As a person, you become reactionary to everything that goes on in your life and not realize that God has ordained you to be proactive in this world. To, to When the enemy comes up against you, fight back. Right. And the way you can tell if things are right in your life is when you fight back. The devil, Because the Bible says to the believer. It says, resist the devil and he will flee. But if you're not of the spirit of God, if you don't have the spirit of God within you, right? Then what happens is that you can't resist them for the Bible says the whole world, those that are of this world is under the sway of the wicked one. In other words, you know, whatever direction the wicked one blows, you gonna blow with it. You're like the, 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 the shaft that is driven and tossed by the wind. Right. And so, um, uh, Anthony, and like I said, did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? I said, pleading the blood of Jesus, using cliches, using scripture. If you are not living according to what God has ordained for his children to live like, quoting those scriptures mean nothing. 
quoting those phrases mean nothing to the devil unless you are walking right with God. Because how can Satan cast out Satan? The Bible says, how can a strong man, how can a person go into a strong man's house and take any of his goods? He says, except he first bind the strong man, then you can take any of his goods, then you can plunder his goods. So if the devil is wreaking havoc in my life and I'm falling apart every time the devil is coming, right? Then how do I have authority now to speak against him? Come on now. This is why our lives won't line up with the good news of Christ. And so I've always told you guys, I'm going to give you meat. I'm going to give you stiff stuff because too many of us have been deluded. Too many of us are walking around in our delusion, self-inflicted delusion, and also uh, delusions that are presented by other people. But I want to tell you, you must repent and you must be born again. Last scripture I'm going to share with you, and I want to, I want to read it from the word of God. I want to read it from the word of God. And it's in the epistle of John. And then we're going to pick up because we're going to be touching on some of these things tonight in tonight's Bible study at eight o'clock. And so I want to share this with you um, because this this really teaches us. Um, yes. Thank you, Lord. OK, so it's uh, first John. Right. First John. And let's go into. Um, we can go into chapter. Yeah, let's go into chapter two. Oh, oh you write about that, Afia. That's right. You know, see, and Ifia touches on a, a very important point. Jesus says, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And he now comes into my heart, which means I have all power. Now, mind you, the word of God says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will be the same power that quickens and makes alive my mortal body. So that means that our issue, when you look at the, the word of God, right? Study the word of God, study the book of Acts from, from the Acts of the Apostles all the way through, right? To Revelation. You don't hear so much mentioning about the devil and what the devil is doing. Practically every time you hear a disciple mentioning about the devil, it's either rebuke or it's either it shall not move me type of thing, right? There's a lot of us who we give the devil too much credit because of the fact we give him credit because the devil is on our payroll. We're paying him. We're paying him in our actions and our tears and our fears and our worries. And, our, and, and so the devil, he keeps coming back to what belongs to him. That's what Jesus said. He says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, that unclean spirit looks for a residence. But when he can't find a residence, that unclean spirit says, I'm going to go back to my house. I'm going to go back to what I'm familiar with. Right. And so what happens is that anyone who is trying to live for Christ and let's say you left a place, you left a church that was not feeding you, a church that was not teaching you, and then God sends you to a church that is teaching you, and guess what? You're never there. You don't come to the teachings, you don't come to the Bible study, and you got every excuse why. Whether it be work, whether it be school, whether it be um, I'm not feeling well, whether it be I'm busy, whether it be something's wrong with the kids, and you don't realize that all these things are tied to the works of the enemy. That's keeping you in confusion so that you never fully grasp the fullness of what God has for you. I want you to look in uh, 1 John chapter 2. And I'm going to share this with you and then I'm going to let you go and we're going to pick up again later on tonight. Look at what he says. 1 John chapter 2 beginning at verse 12. 
He says, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his sake. Right? He says, I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And look what he says, and you have overcome the wicked one. But then he gives this instruction. Look at verse 15. He says, do not love the world, nor the things that are in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abide forever. And to that, my spirit says, Amen. This concept of that we we are so much in need and oh god i need somebody to help me i need somebody to to lead me i need somebody to guide me i need somebody to this i need somebody to that listen people of god god said i'll never leave you or forsake you if you are a child of god god dwells within you now the spirit that is within you will lead you to do the things that are pleasing in his sight now, the word of God didn't give two Bibles. So, if I'm in violation of what's in the word of God, and I have the Holy Spirit within me, there's no way I can live my life without being troubled. There's no way I can live my life without being vexed. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, now Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain people of the church. Not everybody was Herod concerned about because not everybody is concerning. Some people are just doubting around, making noise, tinkling cymbals, sounding brass. All you're doing is making noise. You're on Facebook posting this and posting that. You're just making noise because at the end of the day, if you do anything that's halfway worth anything, the enemy starts attacking you and you fall apart. So what good are you? And I, I'm sorry to say that. What good are you if you keep falling apart and you have no victory? The Bible says if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. And so it's unfortunate that so many people have never been told to their face you must be born again. The reason why you're having all those problems, you're not safe. You need to be delivered. You need to see God in all of his glory. And then the things of this world, you got husband, Christian, husbands and wives that decide, I don't want to be with each other. But you're like, we got irreconcilable differences, but we still hanging with Jesus. What? You got, you, listen, I, I'm just telling y'all the truth. You got, um, you know, uh, the, the Bible says, blessed are the merciful. You can't extend mercy to anyone to save your life. You got brothers and sisters in church singing on the choir, playing in the band, but I don't want this person playing with me. I don't want this person standing next to me and sing. But you think Jesus is with you. You got um, brothers and sisters that are coming into church and instead of worshiping God, your eyes are looking all the room watching everybody else. So, so when you look at these things, right? Yes, we go through. Yes, we go through challenges because like what Ephesia said in the word of God, Jesus said it best. He says, those that want to live godly will suffer persecution. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. 
He says, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. So it doesn't mean we don't go through because the Bible tells us in Revelation, these are they who have come through great trials and tribulations, but they wash their robes white in the blood of the lamb. So we know we're going to go through something. But guess what? We are victorious. John says these words, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are victorious. So when you're stuck in the shadows and you've been complaining about the same thing and for the last five, six, seven, I haven't found a church that uh, I feel like I can grow at. You know, churches ain't the same like they used to be. Guess what? A lot of saints ain't the same like the way they used to be either. Because the Bible says, those that love God must also love their brother. <laughs> scripture says, if any man, the same scripture that we just read in 1 John chapter 2. It says, if anyone says that he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar and the truth does not live in him. And so this morning, I just want to tell you, if you can, if you can, who, who's dependent on you? Because if you can do wrong and then try to justify it in the word of God, you're going to be beat with many a stripes. You're going to be, my God, I, listen, the Bible says, you know, it is an awful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. When, when you're going to be measured against Christ, who suffered, bled, and died, and still stayed faithful to his heavenly father. But we today, we go, well, God knows I can't take this, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to divorce my spouse and I'm a hook up with somebody else. Wow. You forgotten the and, and you might be a preacher or teacher, but you forgot what the word preachers and teachers to you. This is why when you know, I'm, I'm just being totally front with you guys. That's why when early in life over almost 20 years now, I went through divorce, right? And when I realized divorce was, was happening, I didn't want it. I was fighting it. And even my ex-wife told my sister, the only reason why your brother won't give me divorce is because he's afraid that it might anger God. And she was so right. Because in my mind, I saw what the word of God says. And it tells husbands, be careful how you treat the wife of your youth. You think God don't see you think God doesn't see the mess that we brothers have done? You think God don't see the manipulation, the flirting, the lust, the infidelity? And hey, and these days, some of you women are guilty too. You think God don't see it? And you think that you're going to stand at his altar preaching his pure, unadulterated, without respect of persons, word of God? It's only by his mercy that many of us haven't been struck down right where we stand. Because even Herod the king was destroyed when the people said he has the voice of a God and he did not give God glory and God killed him on the spot. That's in the New Testament. Ananias and Sapphira. Hey, is this how much you sold the property for? Yes, you're going to drop dead. How many of us was at death door because we said, Lord, I will, and we did not. Lord, I commit, and we did not. Lord, help. So this message today is who's depending on you? Who can depend on you? And if in any way of anything that I shared today, if anything has affected you, my only answer to you is repent and be born again. Don't think what you currently have is salvation because it's not. Repent and be born again.
God bless you. I love you all.